Today, we're going to have a conversation with a podcast veteran, Ben Avery. He may have originally gotten on your radar being the producer of The Tim Dillon Show, or you might be a huge fan of his current podcast, Lemon Party. Welcome to Catching You Up With The Nadal, It's So Good. This episode is executive produced by the one and only Colin Haley. Without the big baller support of Colin Haley, I'd probably be crafting... Uh, very enticing and suggestive, uh, emails that I would then blast out to as many people as possible with a phishing link that if you clicked on it, boom, I get all of your information and then boom, I sell it to third parties and then boom, they sell it to Nigerian princes. So, uh, luckily for, for me and for you, I have Colin Haley's big baller support, so I don't need to do that stuff. And if you want to become a big baller supporter of the show, you can go ahead and click the Patreon link in the description below. Now's a good time to remind you to comment on this video right now, rate it, and subscribe to this channel. If you want to share this interview with a friend, that'd be cool too. So I've heard people express that they would like to see the journeys of some notable podcast producers and, you know, all their different journeys. I did an episode kind of talking about my journey, and and this marks the first episode that I'm doing with a guest. So without further ado... Here is Ben Avery. We're live. We're recording. Yeah, it's it's recording, and it's it sounds it sounds nice, right? No, yeah, we're running it through a lot of shit right now. No, yeah, it's breaking out every couple seconds. That's good. Oh, here you go. <laughs> so uh, the thing is, is if you have oh, it's a the headphone joke. don't let a dog with a big fat ass in your studio, <laughs> or she'll sit on your cord and fuck up the connection. It's a load bearing ass. There you go. Is it uh, is it get better now? No, yeah, yeah, that's perfect. Awesome. Well, uh, am I in the shot? Can you see? Yeah, it looks like you're in there. Cool. Um, so, uh, yeah, welcome back to another episode of Catching You Up with Nadav. Uh, as previously stated, um, I am interviewing some notable people in podcasting mm-hmm. industry that, you know, a lot of people are interested in where they are and how they got there and their histories. And, you know, if. If you want to be like Ben Avery or like uh, anyone else that I'll be interviewing, there'll be a series. Um, and this week, we have the very talented and funny Ben Avery of Lemon Party fame. Patreon.com slash Lemon Party. There we go. Uh, where- and I'm on Cameo. Ooh, where can they follow and you? And I do uh, live streams on the Lemon Party Clips channel. Is there somewhere where they can get all these links from? Oh, at Ben Avery is good on Twitter, Instagram, uh yeah, Hell all yeah, those places. So, I'm on the uh, s- offenders uh, watch list. <laughs> Where? Uh, Sexoffenders.com. Wait, is that is that countrywide, or could you skip county and like kind of start from scratch? Oh, you can go all over. You're it's. I'm a nomadic. <laughs> p- <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm like a, the Apache. Boy, you just get. Do you get demonetized left and right? <laughs> <laughs> Cause like we're we're maybe a minute and a half. I'll right? call like I'll call like my ad person. I'll be like, "What the hell? Why aren't we getting any ads anymore on the show?" They're like, yeah. "The show is called Lemon Party." You're leading with, p- yeah, yeah. Well, you know what's funny, dude? I could actually give you. The, I didn't even real. I didn't connect these dots. Uh, I have a killer domain that you could probably use. Uh, LemonPartyTheMovie.com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember like 10, 15 years ago. I uh, I thought it'd be funny if I made a trailer for a documentary that didn't exist. And I just took- Are like, you being for real right now? I'm serious. I oh, took, you're being dead I took, serious. I took Tub Girl. I took Goatsy. Uh, I took Lemon Party. I did all of those. And I just put together like that with a whole bunch of weird captions together. And, the, uh, the only one I could get was Lemon Party dot life. Which dot people are- life? St- life. Cause, but people are still scared to go to that. Yeah. To buy live tickets for shows and stuff. Lemon Party the movie- That's up for grabs. That's not bad. I'll transfer that domain over right now if you want. Let's take a quick break and tell you about the sponsor of this show, Blue Chew. If you can't get it up as easily as you used to, don't panic. Blue Chew has you covered with ED medicine that gets sent straight to your door. No need to confess to your family doctor that you're having trouble. Everything is done online. Get a digital consultation with one of their physicians and your prescription will be at your door in days. You know, a lot of people, when they have a part of their body that doesn't work, they go to the doctor and take care of it. Oh, I have a weird range of motion with my shoulder. Let's go see what the doctor says to fix it. Hey, uh, I'm bleeding a lot from my ear. Maybe the doctor could fix that. And if your dick isn't working at 100%, That's something you should go to the doctor about. 
Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at BlueChew.com. Chew it and do it. Blue Chew's got a special deal for my listeners. Try Blue Chew for free when you use my promo code Nadav at checkout. Just pay $5 for shipping. That's promo code N-A-D-A-V, Nadav. That's BlueChew.com and promo code Nadav to receive your first month's supply for free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And thank you, Blue Chew, for sponsoring this show. Now let's get back to the interview. I want to buy LimitParty.org, but I looked it up. I think it would cost me, uh, I think, like 40 grand. About 40 grand, I could get that. Dude, all you got to do is add some dashes in some places. and Great great SEO hack, though, by the way. And this yeah. is this is uh, for anybody starting a podcast out there. <laughs> We're Just teaching. name your podcast after something that uh, people are already Googling. Right. So if you type in Lemon Party now, we're the first thing that comes up. We're above the uh, the, the OG old, Lemon Party, the old man gay sex website. You know what's funny is that I actually used to work with the guy that created Lemon Party. Are you dead serious? Yeah, he uh, his name is uh, I'll just say his first name. His name is Brett. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I used to work with him at Weed Maps. He used to code for Weed Maps. I remember him telling me, he's just like, yeah, dude, I <laughs> Lemon Party is me. Is he the guy who took the photo? Because I've always wondered who took the photo of the... If you no. don't know what LemonParty.org is, it's two uh, old uh, gay guys Three. getting sucked off by an elderly Chinese oh, man. There it is, yeah. And it's funnier <laughs> that one of them's Chinese. And I think also, the funniest part about it is I think like uh, like they're... They're sucking dick and they're kissing, but also like they're holding hands in it too, right? I think so. I think they're holding hands. No, it's very, um, it's a very endearing photo. No, it's if if you don't avert your eyes, it's quite beautiful. Actually, it's family friendly. Mm -hmm. You know, as long as it's cropped in the right way. That's right. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, dude, I uh, yeah, I remember working with him. I'm like, no fucking way. And then from there. That you know what? Now it's all making sense. That's why I bought the domain. I was like, dude, we need to make a moot. We need to make a documentary about this. He's like, dude, it's not that crazy. It's I found the picture, I posted it, and then some guy bought it for me for like a grand, and then he started making crazy money off of it. <laughs> I knew we had something in common. <laughs> You're a Jew, I'm a Christian, but Lemon Party brings us together. We yeah. have it's crazy that we both have like origins in Lemon Party now. Yeah. But I'm taking back the name. I always thought that was cool too. There's this rapper I really like. His name is John Wayne. Uh huh. But it's J O N W A Y N E. He's a fat white rapper from Alhambra and he makes beats for rappers and he's really good. He, he got sober and lost weight recently, but he wanted to name himself John Wayne because his grandfather was the guy they based John Wayne after. And so he goes, I'm going to name myself John Wayne, and I'm going to get so famous, I'm going to take back the name. Now, he's fallen considerably short. Yeah. Considering, you know, John... It's the first time I'm hearing about yeah. this John with no H, Wayne. <laughs> considering, uh, you know, the epic, uh, of uh, the legendary John Ford and John Wayne, I mean, it's like a... He's never going to do it, but it's still cool that he's got his... You got to... Hey, you uh, aim small, miss small, I think is what they say. Oh. So he's aiming big, and he's, you know, and then you miss big, but then you still end up... In the stars, you know? Right. That's yeah. what I'm doing with Lemon Party. I'm, <laughs> I'm taking back the name. I'm well, taking back gay sex. Well, <laughs> Elderly gay sex. Well, there was also, you know, the John Interracial Stewart. gay sex. That's elderly. <laughs> interracial gay sex. You know what's funny? You hear interracial gay sex, and you're nev- your first thought is never like, oh, yeah, two white guys and an Asian dude. No, I'm just thinking of like it's a shitty punk band outside of Portland. Right. That's called, I'm going to go see interracial gay sex tonight. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, it's really cool. We're all progressive. They'll beat the shit out of you if you're homophobic. <laughs> but also, they'll suck each other's dicks mm-hmm. on stage, and it's all just punk rock. Mm-hmm. <sighs> it, it was just funny to name a podcast Lemon Party to me because I knew people were going to be mad yeah. at the idea of me having my own podcast. And it's yeah. like, dude, you're mad about a podcast called Lemon Party. <laughs> like a podcast <laughs> called Lemon Party lives rent free in your head. That's very funny to me. Yeah, it's just a complete nonsense, and it's an SEO hack, so it just kind of made sense. Is that something that you were sitting on for a minute, or just as soon as you were like, "Oh, I want no, to do no, a podcast"? Yeah, I, I, yeah, for a couple of weeks, I was trying to think of names, and then that was our buddy Joey. What were the runner-ups, <laughs> dude? I can't remember. I mean, just awful, awful. You come up with awful name. I mean, po- naming a podcast is so tough. And then um, my friend Joey, who's like a drunken maniac. Uh-huh. He goes to bars all the time. He gets fucked up. And when the bartender's not looking, he turns their computer around. 
and he'll change their homepage to lemonparty.org. Oh, dude. That's fucking great. I, I used to do so that So he same was, like, shit. bringing Lemon Party back, like, 17, 18 years after the fact. He was, like, it was a resurgence of Lemon Party, so. That's so funny. It just kind of made sense. See, what I usually did was not change the homepage. I would go on to, what was it? I think back in the day, I don't know how I came up on the website. I mean, I have an idea, but it was a website <laughs> called kungfubitches.com. <laughs> and, like, they would always have really good, like, they're looking straight into camera, mm -hmm. like, while they're, you know, have a dick in their mouth or something. And sure. I would just screenshot that and then set it as the desktop of whoever's mm -hmm. friend it was. And yeah, Meat Spin, all, Blue Waffle. They were all all super Christian, too. Mm -hmm. And so they would all be like, the dog, you need a fucking switch? I'm like, you don't know how to change your desktop? And they're like, I do, but she's, like, looking right into my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, none of them liked it. No one really got the joke. Yeah, and you were you were really uh, setting a bad example for uh, like their conception of the Jews. Right. It's like it's this demon that'll sneak in your house and then change your homepage to Lemon Party. Well, dude, that's what the Jews do, dude. That's a, like I was so many people's first Jew when I went to college. It's tough, dude. It's yeah. so rough because it's like I I didn't know if it was like oh I'm Jewish or just my sense of humor was weird. But I remember we were doing icebreakers and we were doing Would You Rather's. Mm -hmm. And I remember, like, everyone's like, would you rather um, run a mile or walk uh, 30 miles? Like, shit, like, like something stupid like that. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And then mine was like, would you rather scrape your shin against a corner of a wall till you get to the bone or, like, suck off an elephant? <laughs> and then they'll be like, uh, the, uh, what? Like, uh, I'm like, uh, corner has AIDS. <laughs> and they're like, Ele elephant has AIDS, too. <laughs> And then and I have it. And then instead of answering, they'll just be like, "We're gonna pray for you at church this week." And I'm like, "No one's ever said that." To Man, me. so you—that's <laughs> pressure. You were people's first Jew, and you made a lot of people probably really racist against Jews because you sucked ass. They asked me where my horns were. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, maybe it was like kind of baked in beforehand. I've had. I'm uh, like, were I, you ever I, I suck ass Christian? as well. <laughs> <laughs> were you ever anyone's first Christian? Uh, man, I grew up <laughs> in such a Christian environment. I'm trying to think if I was anyone's first. I was. There, like I was, when you were in the Fairfax district or something, like, like eh, we need a tenth for a minion. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was for a lot of people. I was the I was their first guy who uh, read books. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was I, a I first see for that. a lot of people. I could see like that. that guy reads. Fuck him. You were my first uh, cortado maker slash drinker. You're like, oh, I love a good cortado. I just made Nadav and it's a nice espresso downstairs. Yeah, homie has like five different coffee contraptions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got a grinder. I got a steam one. I got the whole thing. <laughs> Dude, you did the like slapping milk thing. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you got to get all the. You hang out with us. Uh, <laughs> you follow Christ, you learn a thing or two. Let me tell you, dude. I've been in Texas for fucking two years, and I'm already shooting guns and going to rodeo. Yo, rodeos are wild, dude. You've been to rodeos? Yeah, I have. They smell really bad. Oh, that's the thing that gets you. Yeah, I hate the smell of uh, manure. They, <laughs> I really don't like it. They were slamming all these cows and calves like into the ground, and like my jaws, I'm like. Yo, they're really fucking up these animals. Like, every, like all these old people in cowboy hats are just cool with it. And mm -hmm. like, the people that I'm with are just like, no, Nadav, they need this in order to protect the animals. I'm like, protect? I'm pretty sure they just cracked all the ribs. I know they they pick up cows. They like they spike them on the ground. Yeah, it's you wild. should have seen what they did pre civil rights. I mean, <laughs> there's a reason rodeos are so popular now. They got to get it out of their system somehow. Yeah, they used to do it at the auctions, and now they're like, guys, we got to do something with all this energy. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I mean, yeah, it all correlates. It's all parallels. Mm -hmm. But Goddamn right. All right, let's 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 rewind a little bit. I want, I want to know a little about young Ben Avery. Mm -hmm. I want to know, like, you know, you're on, you're, you have a super successful podcast. Patreon.com slash Lemon Party. And, and YouTube Lemon Party. One word. And live shows? Where can people find Oh, yeah, lemonparty.life. You know, we're going to be... Well, actually, we sold out all of our shows on the East Coast. I think there's tickets left for Philly and maybe D.C. But Philly, D.C., Boston, New York, check. Hell yeah. Um, but we've been toying with some live podcast uh, ideas. We just did Texas. We had Shane Gillis on in Austin. That was a fun time. And uh, we never know. I always plan something different for the live shows. In Austin, we had people put on diapers and uh, pissing them in the crowd. And then we weighed, they took them off at the end, and then we weighed the diapers on stage to see who uh, went pee the most in their diaper. Did anyone accidentally shit? Um, so <laughs> <laughs> we said they were allowed to shit if they wanted. Uh, only one guy actually, 
he put on his diaper in the bathroom and came back out and didn't put his jeans back on. So he just sat like in the front row in a diaper the whole time and pissed himself. And then the only, there was a guy who was a Marine. He was the only other guy who entered the competition. He put his diaper on over his pants and then he pissed his pants. And we had to explain to him that's not how. <laughs> that's not how diapers work. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't you know. don't need the He's diaper. He's so fucking dumb. He doesn't know how diapers work. He literally just pissed. Thank you for your service. He, pit, <laughs> he pissed himself the entire show. And then afterward, we're like, you lost. You're like, guys, it's like getting out of the diaper. Like, I don't. <laughs> Actually, he probably pissed so much, it did seep through his underwear jeans and then got into the diaper. Did you weigh the underwear? We should have actually. Yeah. We should have weighed his jeans actually. <laughs> but the thing is, with scales, you got to like zero it out first and then see the difference. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. So we had to zero out a diaper on stage and then weigh it. And then. Right, you uh, got to tear it up. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was good. I know it's, my way around a scale. So yeah, we do fun. <laughs> we haven't done that since because it was horrifying and uh, very depressing that uh, the, the, the fan like, base doesn't know how diapers work. The venue let you do that? They encouraged it, actually. It's, encouraged it? It's Brian Redband's club. Shout out to the great Brian Redband. Oh, oh it, yeah, I hear they have good ceilings over there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> We packed it out. It was a fun time. They, I go, I went to the staff. I was like, "You guys, we want to do this thing with the diaper." I mean, honestly, like we know we're kind of on the fence about it. They you go, know diapers, right? They go, do yeah. They go, do it, please. They were begging me. I was like, "All right, we'll do it." Then. We need to start. They were having, really cool. When you start having myths and legends being surrounded around shows over here, yo, have you been to Sunset? It's fucking people shit and piss themselves. <laughs> but all right, okay, let's rewind a little bit. Okay, yeah. So. Uh, what is the first step that you took? Like Craigslist. Craigslist. Yeah, that's the way. That's the way you. I mean, that's the Craigslist is the like the progenitor for. uh, I mean, uh, some of the most evil that's ever been committed in the world, right? Uh huh. I just a little bit. I uh. So I I had like man, I was working at a dog food store and uh. When was driving Uber? I don't know. Two thousand and. 16. Okay. 2015, 16. And okay. uh, I had this garage. And I don't know. You start thinking about like, you. S- I think Tom Green is the map for almost anybody that, um, for here, here's the thing. Everybody, if, if you're driven, mm-hmm. you're going to figure out how to do whatever you want right. one way or another. If you're driven, right. you, you really will because uh, none of it's actually work. For you, you actually just, uh, you really enjoy it. And uh, I didn't have any money. And I remember going to the paint store and I was like, what's the cheapest green paint you have? I remember spending like, you know, like 12 bucks on like a green big bucket of paint. I just started painting like to like a crazy person. I had stopped drinking and I was losing my mind. And I was, <laughs> I, when you stop doing substances and stuff, and I wasn't an alcoholic, I was just getting drunk every night for years and like drunk driving. And I was, uh-huh. I was literally drunk every single night. Uh-huh. I don't have alcoholism, but if I do something once, I want to do it 20 times. Right. So if I have one beer, I have 20. If I have one Coke Zero, I have 40 Coke Zeros. It's just an OCD thing. Mm-hmm. It's just, an, that's all it is. Okay. So got rid of that. And then I just started going crazy in my garage. I sort of started painting, finding a good woman to support you through all this, by the way. <laughs> I mean, emotionally, you know? Uh, I just started, I painted my whole garage green and then I bought this big desk and a couch and I just started learning how to, I started teaching myself how to edit. I started teaching myself how to do audio. I took a, I only had like, I had, I had a hundred, I bought this Mac mini for like 120 bucks and I, it it was broke and I learned how to take it apart and put it back together and I fixed it and I had to take it to a guy who was like my neighbor and we worked on it for days and he charged me like 50 bucks because he was nice and. I learned all this different stuff because I had no. I bought a webcam for like sixty bucks. I'm like, I have video now. Right? Hell yeah! And it's like four <laughs> pixels. Right. I look like a Super Mario Brothers, like Super Nintendo yeah. guy. It's so pixelated. Like Two forty p. Yeah, but you just need something to work with so right. you can start editing stuff. And uh, how did you teach yourself? Was it all just like fucking around the program, or did you look up tutorials and stuff? The only so I learned nothing in college. I mean, absolutely nothing. Right. I have an advertising degree. But I learned tons of stuff in college just through YouTube and right. through reading. I love the best reading teachers. and I love going on YouTube. That's the only way I've learned anything. If someone's trying to teach me something, I don't listen to them. Right. So unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, I have to like. Like uh, mentors and stuff. You're like, hey, I want to take you under my wing. You're like, suck my dick, dude. <laughs> men- mentors I will listen to because I seek them out. But uh, 
Um, and a mentor is a great thing. You got to have find an Ob one, and you yeah. got to learn from an Ob one. You know, everyone needs a mentor. Like yeah. it's uh, honestly everything that I learned about being efficient and creating smart workflows. That's like. Oh, yeah, this used to take me two days to do, mm -hmm. and you figure out a way to, for it to take you now half a day. Mm -hmm. And, like, that's hard to figure out on your own. You need yeah. to learn tips and tricks from people along the way. That's a, that's right. And if you if you work on a skill set and you really build it up, you get so – it's kind of like – um. it's kind of like you're not getting any pussy. And then, uh, <laughs> yeah, and, one day it's just like, <laughs> oh, you just fucking ask to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you pay someone money to suck your dick. <laughs> No, it's like, it's kind of like, you, it's like, you're like, I just love going to the, you don't get any pussy, and then you go to the gym, and then you just learn to love to go to the gym, and then you lose so much weight, and you uh, get so much more attractive, right. that one day you go, wait, but people want to fuck me now? People are talking to me so much different. It's kind of like that, where I was like, working on this skill set for a year and a half, and then like someone was like, dude, can I pay you like, you know, like a hundred bucks? To, I'm like, you're going to pay me a hundred bucks to do this shit? I'm like... I'm like a retard can learn how to do this. Right. But I only, it's because I have such a low opinion of myself. Right. I think, but I've gone through t hundreds and hundreds of hours of learning how to do this. And it, to them, it's completely, I have dog hair all over my microphone. Sorry. And they have, they have no idea how to do it. And then, so then I started really, I'm like, I think I can get out of the dog food store. I don't think I have to put like cans of dog food on the shelf for like eight hours straight oh, yeah. where I'm losing my fucking mind. And then, just trying to take smoke breaks as much as I can. So then I was like, why don't I just go on Craigslist? And that was the game changer. Okay. Because I posted an ad. I'm like, who wants their podcast produced? Here are my rates mm -hmm. for uh, – and by the way, I barely knew how to do any of this shit. <laughs> Dude, that's and the whole I trick. Needed, I, I kind of need to – I go, I'm going to get paid to learn how to do this shit more because i still really didn't know what i was doing mm -hmm. and so people paid me to fuck up and but they didn't know i was fucking right. up. right they don't know what the fuck you're doing they don't know and you fake it they don't know fucking it. anything exactly yeah. so yeah you start off with imposter syndrome but that kind of no nah, that doesn't really go away mm -hmm. but like you know you get more confident with your skills you get it's <laughs> it's um i got in some hairy situations though i yeah. produced a podcast for a really buff in the Hollywood Hills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like a he was a crooked cop. Uh -huh. And I found this out later and he like he would sell like Trembolone to kids on Instagram and he was like a on stuff. What the fuck is Trembolone? No, I didn't know this going into is it, that of course. Steroids? Otherwise I would have charged more, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> Trembolone is like a Chinese steroid that he was taking. I mean the guy looks like a thumb, right? Okay. He he's, he looks like Joe Rogan standing on top of Joe Rogan. Okay. That's what he looked like. <laughs> okay. Um and he uh Dude, he like he threatened to fucking kill me, come over my house because I it was like I can't do this anymore. After I bought all the equipment for him and mm -hmm. set it up, and he was like, "Ah, oh, let me show you something." He took me in this room and he he uh, took a one of Elon Musk's flamethrowers off the wall and he just started like shooting in the backyard. It was it was really uncomfortable. And then uh, I went home and Googled the guy and I found out he ran here from like a different state and he was a crooked cop and he's a and there were like all these hit pieces on the guy. Where like he's like run he was like he was like fired from the police force and then he was driving around pulling people over even though he wasn't a cop anymore and he still had his badge and then he was uh, stealing drugs from he was doing searches of people's cars and like taking drugs from them and like doing all this crazy shit right it's like kind of cool stuff yeah so so obviously <laughs> minus you know the diddling kids exactly so obviously he moved to Hollywood and he's doing great. You know, he's, in, he's in the Hollywood Hills and he has yeah. uh, like successful businesses P out here. He's now P. Diddy's neighbor. He's taking. He's moving into Diddy's house. Exactly. Yeah. They're high fiving. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but he uh, he threatened to fucking like kill me and stuff and find where I live and take all my shit. And he, I had to block him. It got really so. There was, but you live and you learn. <laughs> You live and you learn. I produced at one time though. I mean, I was probably producing like ten or eleven podcasts. Like concurrently at one time like every so i'd be like okay hey, mondays i do these two tuesday i do these two and like, like some of them were just audio doing 11 yeah holy shit yeah i think at one point i had like 11 shows that i was trying to do but then that so then you do Yo, that, that and it gives you workflow you, can i ask you what the rates that you charged for that was back then i was like well you have to work with people right so right. i was like if it's audio only it's like 150 per episode okay and then if it's video it's 300 okay. and then like multicam was like you know four hundred or something like that or five hundred. 
Okay. And then usually people be like, I can't do that. That's way too much. And then I would just like bring the price down. Okay. Something like that. Right, right, right. You, you aim a little higher than you want. Mm-hmm. And then like, all right, yeah, I'll work with you. I'm yeah. And I think I was making $12 an hour at the dog food store, minimum wage in LA. So as soon as I was making like $1,800 a month, which was more than what I was making at the dog food store, I quit that job. And I was like, I can't believe this. I have like financial. Right. Free- I felt like I was just walking around town like fucking. Swing. I felt like it's that scene in Dumb and Dumber when they come in with the tuxedos and they're swinging the canes and shit. <laughs> like I thought I was like Mr. Hutch. Like I was like, holy shit! I have um, I don't have a boss for that. Well, I have ten bosses. <laughs> I have ten bosses, but ten the, clients, ten clients that you can fire just as much as they could fire you. That's right. <laughs> and I would constantly you just learn how to become a liar too. And then if they're a pedophile, <laughs> boom, fired. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's where I draw the line. <laughs> That, actually, that's just a surcharge. Hey, look, yeah, I live in L.A. You, you know, pay a tax. if you live in L.A., if you're really lucky, you'll make a, a lot of money one day. <laughs> that's what I've always said. If you that's play your I've, cards, if right. you play your cards right, you'll make a <laughs> very rich. Because it's expensive to be a. So it's very expensive. God, yeah. I have to do so much fucking. Bleeping it, we would on this. all be so <laughs> lucky to be a write-off for a. Uh huh. We'd be all so lucky to be a big tax write-off for when a pedophile. When I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> so that, th- that uh, I learned so much in right. like two years. Right, and you I, said that it taught you work and, and then um, through that, you know, you just start meeting people. I met Nick Davis, who produces Theo Show. Right. I met, how, I met you, Jamie. How'd you meet, how'd you meet them? Um, just through other, other comedians, other okay. people. One, it's... So it's these, like it's like every business that you get into where the worlds are smaller than you think, right? Because you're once you get into a world, you're actually always like one degree removed away from where you want to be. Like you're right. one person away. You're never. It's not like there's fifty people right. to get to it. Like it's your I, one good hang away from doing the thing that you want. I do. love David Lynch, right? Mm-hmm. And I told like my one of my old neighbors, I was like, I love David Lynch, and dude goes, dude, my uh, my best friend, he's David Lynch's assistant. You want to meet him one day? And I was like, what the? F-? I'm like, what? It? But that's living. So if you live, you have to go to the place that you want to. You gotta. Uh, 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 if you're a duck, uh-huh. you gotta go to where your ducks are in that pond. Right. So you gotta fly to that pond and you gotta be there, and then right. you'll realize that it's all just a big. Right. And you're never that far away from but you're and you totally are, by the way. <laughs> you're very far you're very far away and there's a big financial chasm between you two, but there's um, also if like, you want information and knowledge and you want to learn, it's all right there. And it's all a big barrier to entry too, where it's like you could be on the outside of the wall for like one, two 10 years and all it takes is just that one friend that you make that is able to like sneak you like Trojan horse you. Oh yeah so this is the other thing I I realized very quickly that uh, none of this is a meritocracy and people want to work with you if you're fun to be around and being good uh, being good at your job actually means nothing to no one at all Right. even kind of they just want uh, are you attentive Uh, are you hard working are you kind to people and uh, and by the way, none of this applies to you if you're like you know a comedian or something. But if, <laughs> <laughs> but if you're because uh, then to get to the higher higher levels, you actually have to be a real piece of shit, right? Who you know doesn't care about anybody. Sell your soul, complete down psychopath. The river. Yeah. But if you want to be, if you don't, if you want to have your soul intact and you want to be a human being and you want to have a beautiful you know wife and kids and stuff like that, <laughs> you know, if you don't want to be a uh, if you don't want to be a you know a, a cautionary tale, uh, um, then uh, th- this is the way you can go about things, and you just you still stay guarded, right? Because that's a, that was a hard thing to being in this world is you realize people will, um, and this is a, I'm a very Christian, gullible guy uh, coming from West Texas. You know, you quickly realize that um, uh, people will mimic the traits of a good friend right. to get what they want from mm-hmm. you. And so you just have to be really careful and with everybody, unfortunately. But you can't be cold. You can't. You can't have a cold heart with everything. You have and to that be makes ready you, to get hurt. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> you got to live amongst the vampires, but you can't become one yourself. Right. So you need to. You just need to guard yourself, but you can't. You can't become closed off. You can't totally. become a psych. Then that's also how they win. Right, because if so. you're staying in your apartment or like wherever you are, like all night, you're like oh, I, if I go out there, they're gonna get me. But it's also like. You're not going to find your people. 
Yeah, just be. Uh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. You still gotta. You still gotta find your people, and everybody has flaws, and be a grown up about it, and realize that you know if you get got, just don't get got again. Right. Exactly. Because that's the thing is that so many people think like it's the the possibility of failure that paralyzes so many people to even take that first step. But a lot of people don't understand that failure is the first step to success because you're not going to get good at something without being super shitty at it first. Mm -hmm. No one's fucking good right out the bat on anything. No. In fact, I mean, um, I mean, I write for like six hours a day and all writing is, is just failing better. Right. So you just, you write a sentence a hundred different times and all 99 of them are bad. Right. And then the hundredth one is good. Right. So you just fail, 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 fail. And you only, you only learn by doing. Right. You only learn. No one's going to show you how to. And the thing, too, about even, you know, people always ask me questions about, like, producing podcast. Everybody has different setups and different workflows. Right. This is totally different. I'm running this through an Apollo X4 universal audio system, which is way overkill, right? Mm -hmm. This should be, like, for guitars and stuff. But it sounds really good with a $100 mic, an E835 yeah. from Sennheiser. Um, I'm recording backup into a Zoom L8, which is overkill as well. But uh, young Jamie said, always have backup. Because when it comes to audio, there's no recovery. One in a thousand is going to fail. Right. I know it's like riding a motorcycle. It's not it's not how you lay it down. It's when mm -hmm. meaning that anybody who rides a motorcycle is going to get in a crash at some point in their life. It's just, is it going to be a bad one? Is it going to be, can you recover from mm -hmm. it? That type of shit. So I'm recording in here through Luna and through all my plugins, mm -hmm. through my universal audio gear, mm -hmm. through my Mac. And so I have two things going, right? I use this one because it's easier because it's already a mix down, but right. you ha you had a completely different setup at yeah, YMH. Everyone does. I've had completely different setups on every show, every iteration of everything. It's all it's all different. Right. You got to figure out, you got to keep failing and find out and then take and then whittle away and figure out what works for you. I know this a lot of this sounds very banal, but that's the thing. There's no um there's no um um college for doing any of this right. stuff. For I direct us go check out the sketches that we make for Lemon Party. I I try really hard to make those look like films. Dude, they look incredible. Thank they look you. beautiful. Thank you. My buddy Kevin Daly, he's a great cinematographer. I I write and direct those mm -hmm. and they're so much fun and every time I do one of those I learn. That's right. all I do. I've talked to Louie about this. You're trying to sponge. Yes. You you find somebody to build your cinematic language right. with. So you find people to work with, and as you keep making stuff, you make smaller things, smaller things, and then you, hopefully one day you make bigger things, but you develop the ways in which all of you guys communicate together. Totally. And this is across the board with everything. As you move up through something, you just keep failing. Right. And that's the that's the fun, that's the real fun part of it. Yeah. You're going to fail, and that's... But if it's you know if you love it you love it if it's if it's fun it's fun I don't really give a shit I wake I fail every single day I feel like a dumbass <laughs> every day that's the thing if you're doing all this stuff anyway you probably hate yourself so like oh, yeah. <laughs> you can't just hate yourself as much as you can without taking your own life <laughs> and then just just know you're at this you're at bottom anyway baseline right. who gives a shit because honestly the thing is if you don't hate what you're putting out do you really care. <laughs> Yeah, that's probably really true. Because I can't watch myself. Like, when I edit my episodes, like, God damn, and I really need to find an editor to do this stuff for me. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll record for an hour at thinking that, oh, yeah, the, like there's very little I need to trim. And then I start watching. I'm like, oh, cool, Nadav, you sound like a real fucking idiot right here. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> real fo really feeling yourself at this part, huh? And I end up cutting it down to, like, 15, 20 minutes as opposed to, like, the original hour that it was. Yeah, you can't, uh, you can't like, navel gaze. Right. I know people that try to make like minute long like comedy sketches mm -hmm. and then it's like days and days and days of editing. It's like, dude, at some point. You just got to like, turn it around. You got to churn it what, out. What is this? Killers of the Flower Moon. <laughs> like fucking just like put like take a sh It's taking a shit. Just take it. Just flush the toilet. What the yeah. fuck? <laughs> <laughs> if stuff sits a around for too long, too, it just it goes bad. Right. Like just fucking. You need just, to get it out as quickly yeah. as possible. I think I read um, recently. Uh, William Faulkner said if he could rewrite any of his great works, and he believes this is the case with every great author, that they would um, do it better the second time. And that's kind of a haunting thing yeah. to know that um, – because he was a fucking – he was a genius. Yeah. But even he is like, no, he can read his old stuff and be like, I would take this out, move this, this sucked. And th these are like one books that are like, you know, Literary change the landscape. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so – and I think – I think Paul Schrader said something along the lines of like you never 
I think Paul Schrader, like, he put out one of his... He's the guy who wrote Taxi Driver. Yeah. He put out one of his movies, and then he was so obsessed with it not commercially doing well, he got the raw footage, and he started editing it again for himself. Just to, like... Because he couldn't... What's that David Foster Wallace line? He said, everything I, I've let go of has claw marks on it. <laughs> That's what a lot of artists are, where they can't I love let go of, of something. So, you, you never... That's the thing, too, with editing. You're never... Uh, it's never nothing's ever finished. You just have to decide to stop editing, right? Because that's the thing too. Is like, it's kind of the nice thing of having a weekly podcast where it's like, look, homie, you could be precious with mm-hmm. this, but no matter what, shit's coming out every yeah. Friday. You I know? say stuff I regret all the time on my show, dude. Yeah. I, but it's it's raw. It's I say things wrong. I say things that are historically inaccurate. <laughs> so you're having these uh, uh, 11 podcasts. You're starting to get mm. one. De- you're one degree away from the people that you want to work with. Okay, so that's when I met George Kimmel. Okay. Who you just saw yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just did a panel with him over at uh, Podcast Evolution, mm-hmm. which is why I'm over here in L.A. Yeah, and I, uh, he, man, I learned so much from him. Dude, he's such a fun dude. Him and Bryce and... Uh, Andres, uh, Andres. And, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Met Lane and Grace too. Yeah, they're su- such a solid crew. Over mm-hmm. there. Yeah, and I, uh, my name's still on like one of their lockers. I, I worked for them for like seven months, but I learned. Uh, I'm always grateful to those dudes. Really? So you were you were with those guys? I'm always grateful to a lot of people. Like those guys, I'm grateful. You were always so nice to me. From yeah. the, I don't forget that because a lot of people were like dicks to me from the beginning, and then they want so- something from me later, and I go, I'm sorry, I'm. I hold grudges. <laughs> Dude, it's and so I, crazy. But you showed me your true colors from the beginning, so then I don't fuck with you. Yeah. So. Well, that's the thing. is that It's just like, I don't understand people that like are gatekeeping. and like, Dude, do you understand that like this entire industry, every industry that you're in is built on relationships? Yeah, and, yeah. Like, yeah. And being fun to be around. Exactly. Yeah. And it's like, I knew from the get-go, I'm like, oh, no, 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 this is good fabric. Like, mm-hmm. Ben comes from good fabric. Aw, like, thanks, buddy. Yeah, dude. Like, I could tell from the get-go, like, I this dude you. fucking reads. <laughs> Like, I never liked you. Like, he's like, you got an irritating laugh, bitch. <laughs> Yo, this is a deep cut. Did you ever see that movie Bully? Bully? Yeah. Uh, the video game with no, the... No, no, no. I, I remember seeing it on IFC, and it was about a, like a group of friends that had this one friend that was a bully, and they just took him out to the marshes and killed him together. I'm looking at that. That sounds great. <laughs> I remember there's this one line that's imprinted in my head where he's like, He's fucking this girl that she's like fucking him to distract him. And at the end of it, she tries to make a joke and she laughs and he just goes, you got an irritating laugh, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Jesus Christ. I saw this shit in ninth grade before I started fucking. And I'm like, is this what, is this what being an adult is like? Oh, 2001. <laughs> this looks insane. Dude, it's a wild fucking movie. The, I think the dude for Mean Girls, the gay guy for Mean Girls is in it. I don't. I don't watch movies. And Telly. I don't watch movies with gay guys in it. Telly. So. Telly from Kids is in it. Oh, nice. <laughs> he doesn't have AIDS in this one. I don't think. Shut the. Uh, shout, Spoiler alert. <laughs> a lot of a lot of celebrities listen to Lemon Party, but uh, you know my favorite one who listens to Lemon Party hmm. is um, uh, Spanky from the Little Rascals. Oh no shit! You remember him? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. That guy's like a guy from my childhood. I met him in Austin. He's the fucking coolest, and he's a Discord mod. For Lemon Party. No fucking way, Spanky? Yeah, he's really cool. Wait. And I'm just kidding. No celebrity listened to the Lemon Party podcast. I was just joking. <laughs> <laughs> but he does. He does. Well, dude, it's so crazy. Like, I had, um, and you know, maybe he doesn't want me to say this, but I like, I had like a talk with uh, Patrick Renna. Uh, Ham Porter. Oh yeah, the yeah I see him on uh, TikTok from time to time. Yeah, yeah. He's he, always he, gyrating. He just did Honeydew. Yeah, he's doing all sorts of TikToks and mm-hmm. stuff, and like. I remember, like, I got connected through him somehow, and I was like, dude, you know, like, I was in the Jewish fraternity, and my frat name was Ham Porter, <laughs> and, like, my thing was that I had to tell people how to make s'mores while I was, while I was a pledge. <laughs> this is s'more stuff, you know, like, just yeah, yeah, that yeah. shit, and mm-hmm. it's just like, holy shit. It's always, it's always weird when you meet a guy like that, and right. you go, fuck, that's like a... Like, I remember me- being five yeah. and like seeing you on the TV all the time. That's yeah. that. Those are the weirdest ones because I've seen like Tom Cruise in person and people like like I've seen like really famous people and that's always weird. But like when there's like a guy from like the the that was in your dreams when you were six, that's even that's even stranger. Right. That's even weirder. It's even weirder than seeing like a a, a, a celebrity like Tom Cruise. It's strange. Cause it's like it's like seeing Bugs Bunny. Yeah, you go. It's what someone the that fuck? was important to you and like ingrained in your mm-hmm. shit. Where it's like one sound bite or one smell will take you back there like immediately. Yeah, like uh, I was obsessed with those Ernest movies. Mm-hmm. And so if I <laughs> what was that guy's name Vern? Uh, what was that guy's Vern, name? Not Vern Troyer. That's uh, uh, that's Minnie. That's me, right? the little midget that yeah. did the sex tape and then died. 
Man, what a run. <laughs> you, did you ever see the Vern Troyer sex tape? I stayed away from it. He's doing he's doing two fists up a woman's pussy. You can cut this off if you want, but he Oh, and by the way, people don't know this at the at the time, but I was also working with I know Sickler from like eight years ago. Oh no and, shit. And Jay Larson. Okay. From uh oh, you did crab back stuff? in the Crab Feast days. Okay. Near the end of the Crab Feast before they stopped doing that show, I was helping uh, them with all their stuff. So you were in Seven Eckies and Crab Feast. And so I also interned at Funny or Die in 2014 for, uh, it's Adam McKay and Will Ferrell's company. Right. I think it's uh, since been dissolved. You should have hired me after my internship. <laughs> I could have turned things around. Uh, but uh, uh, so I, uh, through them, I met people who, uh, ran, and they weren't going to hire me. I was, Will Ferrell was sponsored by Milwaukee's Best. And uh, the beer, yeah, yeah, hell yeah. And it's, I don't know if you remember those commercials. So they had crates of Milwaukee's Best in the office, and I would it, like people would kind of leave at like three thirty, and then I would just start drinking beer at my desk. <laughs> the intern, yeah, yeah. And I remember like because I had a feeling I was like I was like these guys are all like comedians, like no one gives a shit, like they're all like degenerates, right? And I remember. Surprise! One of the They're not. Well, one, one of the interns was like, uh, "Dude, you can't be drinking. Like, you're never gonna get hired here and all this shit." And I was like, "They're not gonna hire us. Who gives a shit?" Anyway. <laughs> and, and I was like loaded, and like I saw a writer. He ended up working at Jimmy Kimmel Live like the next year, but he like walked in with some other writers, and I was like, "I was like, hey, I was like, I'll be completely honest with you." I'm like I'm like getting drunk at work, and I said this in front of everybody. I go, "This is like fine, right?" And he like he climbed up to the top of the stairs. He looked at me. He looked around. He goes, "I'm drunk right now." <laughs> <laughs> and I just like raised my beer like this. But yeah, I would get hammered, and then there's a guy who I worked there with. I made I made like best friends with. We would smoke weed every day at the top of the parking structure where they have the Oprah Winfrey show in that lot now. Okay. We would smoke weed and look out over LA and just, you know, I would try to get to the point where I could, I, you get smoke weed so I can drive. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so we'd smoke weed. That guy's a super famous YouTuber now. I don't want to out him, but he was running, running their Vine stuff. Uh, he's a great friend of mine. And he, uh, we both were, had nothing going on at the time though. So we would just smoke weed in the parking, uh, parking garage and like look out over LA and it's that places like that is where I just, I learned a lot about the city and you, cause you got to learn about your environment too. And you got to learn how to, I don't know. I don't even know why I'm, I'm saying all this, but basically I was there. I was a, a fucking drunk and then I, I made connections through there. I started working for people doing uh, live comedy shows and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And through that I met comedians and. I was producing podcasts and this, that, and the other. So it's like, I don't know. But in between in between that, I had like 19 jobs. Right. Uber. I delivered food for the longest fucking time, just listening to podcasts and, and just driving Uber, uh, delivering pizzas. I worked at a Chinese restaurant in Beverly Hills for like a year. I worked at a dog food store for a couple of years in Eagle Rock. I fucking asked my mom for money. I asked fucking. That's always fun. I was like, "Mom, can I have? I can have a thousand dollars. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm like, I'm, like, sorry, I'm, a, I'm doing this of, again. I'm sorry. I'm wasting all of my potential. I'm like, I swear, I'm working on something. I need. No, my mom helped me out with like a thousand bucks once, and I was like, that. And I was like, thank you so much. Like, I was, I was the kind of broke where my aunt and uncle. I saw my aunt and uncle recently. I was like, every day, every time it was my birthday, they would send me twenty dollars. And I was like, things were going so bad for me. I can't thank you enough that you'd send me a nice card with 20 bucks. It would like, it meant the fucking world to me. So time, when you're really grinding stuff out in the early days right, like that, you need, um, you know, don't be afraid to uh, ask for help. I mean, it's, look, I'm not going to, I'm not going to inherit anything from my family. They have fucking nothing. <laughs> they're retards. <laughs> They have nothing like to give they made me. me. <laughs> they made me, and they're retarded, and they didn't teach me how to be good with money. Um, and I'm still bad at, I'm terrible with money to this day. But uh, yeah, you you uh, um, don't be afraid to call your mom and and ask her for a hundred bucks, <laughs> and then take that money and go buy a bunch of uh, Colt 45s <laughs> and drink them in your garage. <laughs> <laughs> Anything. Look, you need to figure out how to sleep, and if that's how you sleep, mm -hmm. that's what you need. That's right. That's a, like a nice old metallic uh, sleeping pill. Mm -hmm. That's right. So just a uh, just. I mean, I used to tape forties to my hands. <laughs> Ed, Edward forty hands is what by yourself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Literally by myself. <laughs> 
My wife would come home from work after a grueling like eleven hour shift. Like, like, thank God you're here. I need you to take these <laughs> off. I need you to tape this other one for me. Actually, <laughs> I'm like, you're fucking late. I'm trying to duct tape these forties to my hands. I can't do it by myself. How about you make yourself fucking useful, bitch? <laughs> the duct tape's in the cabinet. But see, that's so interesting. Like, that's always. There's so many people that like you know see what you do or see what I do, and they're like. Man, they have it so fucking easy. It's like, you don't understand that, like, what you're seeing is the tip of the iceberg. And there's, like, 95% of this iceberg is submerged. And, like, there was so much work that had to be done to get to this point. So many scripts I wrote. So many things I bought and tried to do that didn't work. So many... Right. Sleepless I mean, nights where you're working through it because you're like, fuck, I have these deadlines. I need to get through it. I need to deliver it. Because yeah. if not, then that's going to fuck me. And then that shit's going to, like ripple effect into other shit and you're just so invested in your own future that you have to fucking put your best high amounts of stress millions of flights i mean and that's if you're lucky by the way right a lot of people the the funny thing is when i sometimes when i talk to people and then they go i've met some people in person they go how do i do what you do and i kind of explain to them and they go yeah but i don't i don't want to do that and i'm like yeah but that's how you do it and they're like, right. yeah. they go no 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 like sometimes they'll be like You'll talk to people that go, I want to like direct a movie, right? There's, I've had this conversation like literally a dozen times in LA. They go, I want to, I want to make my own movie. I go, dude, that's great. You, um, you know, I, I PA'd on tons of shoots. I worked on Nathan for you. I worked on, uh, tons of reality shows out here too. I forgot I was doing all those jobs too. I worked on a, like a fucking, <laughs> a gamer, uh, fucking gamer, uh, G4 or something. Uh, what's it called? It's like, you know, remember double dare back in the day? Yeah. It was like that, but for gamers that smelled bad. <laughs> and I would, I literally had to go around the studio for 10 hours a day and I had Febreze and the gamers smelled so bad. I would Febreze the gamers as they left rooms. So that because they smelled so bad, people couldn't work around them. <laughs> they had like a map. And I was like, these fucking fat losers with their Mountain Dew code red shirts. And they'd, they'd be like, that guy's sponsored by Mountain Dew. He flew here from Austria. He's worth $14 million. I'm like, all right, well, for $14 million, you think you could buy a bar of fucking soap? Yeah, dude, I used to work uh, for the cinema. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, um, uh wait what what was I talking about that for? I was uh, about pe people are asking you like oh yeah yeah so they go so people go I want to direct my own movie I want to make my own movie I go so you got to you just got to start as a PA you're right. gonna make like you gotta a, work your way up you, I made 120 to 140 bucks in cash uh for like 12 14 hour shifts where I'd have to wake up at 5 a.m. and drive an hour and a half to them in LA traffic and then you drive back and then you do that for like five or six straight days. And the food's dog shit, and, and no, no one respects you, and everybody treats you like shit. But you do that, and then let's say you want to be a DP, then you start talking, you start being buddy buddies on set with the, you smoke a cigarette with the guy who's, right. he's second DP, and he starts talking to you about lenses, you start talking about movies you like, and he's like, hey, buddy, why don't you come over here? You, I, I, I can need some help on this next scene. Then you start talking to him, you start hanging out with him after work. I got to the point with a couple of those guys where I saw I can make this a career for myself, mm -hmm. but I always wanted to do my own thing. But I still learned a lot on those sets. Right. But You have to. As a PA, you have to sponge as much as you want. That's what you're supposed to do. And that's probably the best way to finally to go about learning how to make a movie is just hanging out on movie sets and working for people to make movies. Yep. Uh, but I tell people that, and they go, they go, no, I just want to make my own movie. I just want to direct, though. I'm like, okay, yeah, you just then, I guess, go ask someone for $15 million and then... <laughs> And then make a bad movie because you have no experience around people who make movies and you don't you've never fucked up making a movie. Right. You've never fucked up making a short film. You've never fucked up making a sketch. You've never shot anything on an iPhone. You don't know how to edit. The best way to be a director and a writer for, for anything is to learn how to edit and get really fucking good at it. Right. And it costs no money. You get I know it's expensive, but you gotta get an Adobe suite. Uh, subscription. Well, I guess a lot of people. I talked to Louis C.K.'s editor, who I've, I've worked with, who uh, uh, his name's uh, uh, Carlos. Mm -hmm. He uh, he said a lot of people are switching to Final Cut now because I know Premiere Pro was the industry standard. I guess right. I can talk shop a little yeah. bit here because people give a shit about this stuff, yeah, right? Yeah. If they're listening this far, yeah. Uh, Premiere Pro was the industry standard, so I switched from Final Cut. Which Final I, Cut 7 to Premiere Pro, right? Right, which takes forever to fucking learn because it's a new language. And right. now they say people are switching back to Final Cut because it's better for graphics and CGI and all that stuff. This is what he said. 
I don't fucking yeah, know. Yeah, you're doing a lot of CGI apparently, on Lemon Party? Well, <laughs> <laughs> apparently, a lot of people are switching to Final Cut now, and that's. But, but, uh, people always say things. Apparently, Tim Cook is investing millions of dollars now into Final Cut because they kind of were ignoring it for a while. Right. But oh, well, if we're, they're putting it a priority again, that's kind of cool. I'll say this. You got to learn some video editor, and if you get really good at that when you're shooting something, when I'm shooting something now, like on an eight or nine hour shoot, even for like a four minute sketch, you know, it takes a long time to shoot stuff. Right. And it depends on how many takes you want. And you got to think on set and, you know, it's raining now. We can't do that shot. Fuck that. This person didn't show up. Okay. The audio's bad in that room because they're doing construction here. So we got to switch this or change this line. You just got to constantly be changing stuff. And uh, you got to be cutting in your head. Right. That's why you have to be. You have to get really good at editing. You right. have to be. Re- you have to be as you're shooting. You're cutting in your fucking head. And you go. I need B-roll to cut to this for that line because that's exactly. going to work here. And if you, a lot of, uh, I've worked with people who say they really like working with me because I'm an editor first, mm-hmm. and they work with directors who shoot something and it it's not all the way there, and they go, we'll figure it out in post. And but they Biggest they're not an editor, and so they're just trying to put it all on. And you know, how a guy who just strictly pretty much has worked in post for a long time. Yeah, that was that was what I cut my teeth on. Is they go, you can figure this out, right? And you're like, fuck, I'll try to pull the rabbit out of the hat here. But that's when you, you really have to get creative. Yeah, people and that's where I say got, fix it in post. But it's like, no, dude, fix it in production, homie. <laughs> Do that right. Yeah, give <laughs> me give me a ton of stuff to to work with here because yeah. you can't always. Sometimes you just have to turn to the person. You go, we I don't we got nothing. But that's such a good point that you made is if you know how to edit, because that's pretty much once you're done editing. Foundation. That's, that's, that's when it the goes. foundation. That's when it goes like, uh-huh. that's when you're able to to, uh, to upload. Mm-hmm. So if you know what you need to do in order to get to upload, it's just working backwards from that. You know, like, ah, I was going to cut that anyways. That's not that's not a load bearing plot point. Like, yes, it's yeah. a fun joke, but we don't need it. We also, like you said, it's like. Yeah, that's the thing too. Though. You're cutting in your head. You're ask, you're cutting. You go fuck it. I don't. Uh, yeah, you could visualize it. I've had actors in sketches be like, I don't want to say this line, like for whatever reason, personal mm-hmm. reasons. I go okay, and I'm just looking at the script. I start marking out stuff, and I start writing like new shit. I I made a short film in college where we were at a place and we didn't have enough time to shoot uh, the rest of the scenes, but this was our only day to do it. So I started cutting stuff, and and mo- you just have to start. Because your script supervisor comes up to you and is like, "We can't do this." So you go, "Fuck, moving this here, right. moving that there." By the way, I'm 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 not talking about myself like I'm this big Hollywood director. <laughs> I don't fucking know anything. <laughs> I know a lot about editing and uh, stuff like that. But you know, I've 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 uh, d- I've directed and edited and written enough stuff now that I feel like I'm really I have uh, a, ve- a very limited amount of knowledge. You have your wits to, about you. Yeah, well, I have my wits about me. I know how hard it is. And I know how much you have to fail to get to a place. Right. I know how much time these things take, and in order to skin that. a cat the right way, you need to skin it wrong like a million times. Yeah, you know, like, and not only that, but you know, to your point of if you know editing very well, the rest of the decisions that you make become a lot easier. Mm-hmm. And I mean, even in producing podcasts, like, like I'm an editor first, also. So when we would do stuff, like, say for example, there was a joke that was said that was like public isn't really going to react to that. Like, we should probably lift that. But, you know, if it starts getting referenced, like, throughout the entire podcast, that starts being like, you can't really lift that. That Mm -hmm. starts, that's the industry term for it is, that is now baked in. That's that's a funny thing, too, when you start trying to hire people who, you go, I'm going to hire a guy, I had a guy a while ago who was, like, making clips, Mm -hmm. like, I don't know, maybe a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And, uh, or like, uh, no, 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 this guy was just a fan that would make clips, right? Mm-hmm. And he would make clips, and it's like, he clearly didn't understand what jokes were. Yeah. So he would just... Oh, dude, comedy editors are the hardest to fucking find. I, so <laughs> one time I had dinner with um, 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 John McKeever of uh, Gillian Keefe. Yeah. He makes stuff with Shane. He's yeah. really he's funny. Hilarious. So talented. Yeah. He's such a good director and such a nice guy. Uh, McKeever, I was having dinner with him once, and he goes, do you realize what we do is extinct? I said, what do you mean? He goes, comedy editing is not needed anymore. You don't, like, no one is like, get a great comedy editor in here to fix, uh, I mean, it's, there's like nothing on TV anymore. Right. That's like funny, and no one like gives a shit. Right. And you, when stuff is supposed to be funny in TVs and uh, TV shows and movies, I go, fuck, I'm like, the editor has no sense of humor. Right. I can see the timing is, dude, I'll edit to make a joke land in a sketch or something, I'll edit just that specific part for like 
hours to get the beat fucking perfect because it's all about right you're frame fucking yourself <laughs> yes yeah it's all about the, the the rhythm and the beauty of it to get stuff to land you're composing music yeah so if you don't understand if you don't understand funny that's a whole that's a whole other thing where then it's really hard to find comedy editors it's really really hard right it's really hard to find comedy editors who aren't just people who uh, are just going to do stand up or do their own comedy podcast anyway, and they don't do the other thing, right? Because for the most part, anyone that's doing comedy editing is just like, yeah, yeah, they want to do comedy, but like not the editing part, exactly. You know, yeah, and it's exactly. like you, if you find a good comedy editor, you have like once you realize what they are, you have maybe a year, maybe three years until they move on to like the big pie in the sky, where you're like, because they're really good, right? Yeah, you're like oh, they're now fucking working for Will Ferrell, you know, cutting yeah. Step Brothers three or whatever the fuck, yeah, yeah. You know? Well, I don't even. I don't even. Know. I mean, the, like you see, like I watch those movies now. I'm like, did they? I'm like, the editors have. No, they're not. They're horrible. Dude, what was it? I go it? see I all these. I... I can't see comedies anymore because I'm like, Jesus Christ, dude. Man. They're I'm like, all you, trash. I'm like, you fucked up this punchline by cutting to her. I'm like, oh, you need to see. You don't. You want to see her expression as he's saying this right. punchline. Like it's just. It's always just you're, bad timing. You're just seeing either like talentless editors or like suits making the decisions in the editing. That's room, right. Where it's like, what mm-hmm. was it? I think I saw. Was it the house? The one where Will Ferrell and Amy Poehler put together like a casino in their house and shit? <laughs> sure. And like they. All of this sounds fake, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, what's crazy is that they had an all star cast of Upright Citizens Brigade people and mm-hmm. like they had huge names, like huge names that were such good, like improvers. Mm-hmm. But like uh, improvisers, that's it. Um, and they, like it was just so many things fell flat. And it's like, you guys are just trying to jam as much stuff that, that you can in here. Trying to tap into some algorithm that doesn't exist for movie theaters because mm-hmm. no one's seeing movies anymore. Yeah, and it's just like there's no money in it. Yeah, and it, the the problem is too when you just have when you just have improvisers improvising. That's a that was what's so good about Adam McKay to me is mm-hmm. supposedly he would be off to the side. He'd be like, try another line. Here's another line. Here's another line. I like having, especially when we're going to shoot a comedy sketch for Limit Party. Mm-hmm. Uh, me and Devin will come up with like six ideas, six good ideas, and then we take the best one. Right. And that's what I like on set too, where it's like, try this line, try this line, try. So I have seven lines, mm-hmm. and then we take the funniest one. It seems a lot of these now, it's like, okay, we put all these improvisers together, and they just improv for seven minutes, right. and it feels it feels like it's just five minute scenes of improvising right. and, and there's can't no lift anything because it's all baked in. <laughs> yeah. And there's no, there's no conflict. There's no action. There's no, any of that. There's a premise mm-hmm. and that's about it. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, that's, that's kind of the, like, if you watch curb your enthusiasm that Larry David is the, is the, if I can compliment your people here for a second. Yeah, he, I mean, if you want to. He, he's I'm the, not gonna, I'm not going to jump in on this. Curb <laughs> is uh, clearly, Larry has all of the editorial control there. He goes in, he goes, and he clearly is like bitching, and he's found people who have found exactly what he wants in the editing room, but the timing of that show is so good, and the conflict always points to a place of not just funny, but you... At any, it, the conflict's only interesting because of the repercussions Larry might face in the scene. You right. go, this guy's going to kick his fucking ass. Right. Or this guy's going to run Larry over with a car. <laughs> right. Right? This guy's going to ruin Larry's life. Right. And it feels like a lot of comedy movies now, it's just people going like, dude, what do you mean? You you, you put the fish in the, you, the fish tank. You know, it's like, it's right. all this bullshit, like UCB. It's like, don't stuff you get, It's not funny. We have a white guy talking like a black guy. Isn't that fun? It's kind of, yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it just sucks. Comedy's fucking dead, honestly. <laughs> I'm so happy that guys like uh, Shane Gillis and John McKeever, I'm glad that they're getting their due oh, to totally. create something funny. And Tommy Pope, who's re- they surround themselves with really funny people. And as as Shane has risen in the comedy space, he hasn't shed his close friends right. that he's created his comedic language with to rise to the top. That's that's really the secret to Shane's success is he's not shedding people. He And by the way, he's, he's very talented and would be would be great on his own. Right. I'm not saying he's only good because of the people he surrounds himself with. He just with. remembers his friends. Yeah, and I'm, because of that, we get stuff like the Tires uh, sketches. We get stuff like Gillian Keeves. We get stuff where it's... Uh, we get to see him on um, SNL and all these other things, and I don't know. It's just... It's really cool what guys like that are doing, and I feel like I have a little island over here of guys I really love and I really care about Right. that I, I think are so talented, and I'm so happy that I get to work with them. I love my brothers so much, 
and I was just waiting for people to realize how funny he was. Fuck yeah. And it's so funny. It's so it makes me so happy to do a show with him so people can finally see like how talented he is. And my friend Devin, who's been making sketches for twelve years in LA and not having really anything to show for it, for people to finally give it up for him. Right. And people can see how funny he is. And being ar- I being around them till four or five in the m five AM every night for years has made us all funnier. Right. Just by We've been doing Lemon Party for eight years. <laughs> I had it. I had lunch with George Kimmel like last week, and he mm-hmm. goes, "How do you guys do it on the show? Is it pre-written? Is it?" He goes, "Did you take improv classes?" I go, "No, we're just holding microphones for the first time." <laughs> like we've been we've been doing this every night till five a.m. screaming and having takes on things and opinions and just trying to make each other laugh. Right. And it's we've only got better at it by doing it millions and millions of times. The chemistry just gets better and better. Right. And now we can go out on a live show, totally unscripted. We just did it in LA to a, a a show, and we we looked at each other backstage, and we go, "We got to do an hour and a half." I'm like, "Do you <laughs> like, have anything so planned? What are we doing? <laughs> do you have anything planned?" We're like, "I got fucking nothing." We're like, "All right," <laughs> and we went out there and we just started improvising things, and it just built into something, and it became interactive, and it was a great show. Dude, that's so incredible, man. So it's just you can, um, I don't know. It's you gotta. That's a. Uh, Louis showed me uh, the Fourth of July movie. What he was editing on his on his MacBook, uh-huh. and he showed me a cut of it in his uh, in his apartment. Mm-hmm. And then he was just talking about um, making film. He's so smart, dude, yeah. and he's so t- he's so incredibly he's so talented. It's it's insane how good Lu- we're so lucky to have a guy like Louis. Yeah, he's so 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 good. He's so uh, benevolent. He's so generous. He's such a good dude, and he's he's he, he. But I'll never forget what he said, where he said, "You got to find your people and create a cinematic language, and then you you don't get rid of them. You work your way up like this." He goes, and that's how you really create something really. I think he's worked with Paul Kessner, his cinematographer guy, mm-hmm. since like his early days when he was making films on his like bl- the black and white thing where the guy said some ice cream on his website. What's it called? <laughs> uh, something night. Uh, I've seen it. I bought everything on his website. But uh, yeah, and then just you know, watching movies, writing bad scripts, yeah. writing good scripts, maybe. Right. And then uh, I think reading a lot too. I feel like I've got a lot better since I've been reading like really great novels. My vocabulary has just expanded, and I feel Absolutely. like I can think quicker. And all that stuff is good because those guys, Faulkner and Joyce, those guys are masters of rhythm. Cormac mm-hmm. McCarthy, these guys are ma- ma- uh, Herman Melville, M- Nabokov, master of rhythm. Master of yeah. rhythm, their word choice and the things they're doing. The more you dive into it, you see that they're doing this sort of magic trick. Right. And we're in the business of like language and everything. And it's and editing is just it's the same as writing. Right. It's this exact same as writing. You're just doing it, you know, with images. So it, all this yeah. stuff really feeds it all feeds in, into itself. It's all the same thing, even though it doesn't really feel like it. That's such a good point too, because like you could be in your room all night like editing and stuff, but if you're not seeing how how the greats do it and mm-hmm. then understand that language. Cause there's so many people that watch a movie and like, they're like, Oh yeah, that was fine. Mm-hmm. But like, you don't realize that the whole thing with editing is that it's kind of an unseen language. Yeah, that's right. And that like, unless you're actually paying attention, like to look for the seams, you don't actually see the tricks and the techniques that are being used. Cause the whole thing is that, Oh no, the, the, it's putting attention on the subject, on the script, on what's funny, but mm-hmm. being able to present it in a way where you're able to see that is not easy. No, and people don't see the sacrifices you... People don't see the like the compromises you make. Right. They don't see any of that. They don't see... The takes you didn't pick and for they those reasons. And Here's what I kind of realized, too. I was like, people don't care how long it took you to work on something. They right. only care if it's good, and if if it's good, it stands the test of time. People don't give a shit if you worked on a book for seven years. Right. They don't care. The, like if, seven years, it's fucking trash, bro. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and like Joyce, it took him seven years for each one of his books. But like uh, some of Faulkner's best books, like As I Lay Dying, it took him seven weeks, eight weeks. Wow. Which, but that guy was the guy was a genius. But yeah. you know, so uh, but it like no one gives a shit. No one gives a shit how hard you worked on something. No one cares how hard you work. No one cares what opinions you have about stuff. People people want to watch your stuff and fill you in that thing. Right. And so, but to do that, you can't lie to yourself. 
you got to look at your life directly. Yeah. You got to look yourself in the eye. You got to be honest with yourself. You got to be honest with yourself. And if you're not honest with yourself, it's going to be really hard to be in whatever business you're in because of the dissonance you'll start experiencing. Right. Because you're going to have an opinion of yourself that the world doesn't. And that doesn't mean the world is right or that you're right. It just means it's going to, there's going to be tension within you if you don't have any sort of reconciliation there. Right. Because you go, but well, I'm so great. I should be a... You know, I should be a Brad Pitt or, or I should be like Martin Scorsese. And then everyone's like, dude, we've worked with you. And you like, you you're actually, the, you yeah. suck ass. <laughs> <laughs> you're not a charismatic right. person. You're not fun to be around. You, uh, and by the way, this is another thing I've, uh, with running into people, you're not uh, what you consume. Right. You're not, people think because they watch all the great movies that they're great and it's, you're not. Mm -mm. You know, th there's a guy named Harold Bloom who was one of the great literary critics. Mm-hmm. He read everything. He's probably the most well-read guy now. He passed away, I can't remember when, like 10 years ago or something. He's read literally every single book. And he great opinions about literature. And he did wonderful things for um, the landscape of literature. I think he taught at Yale. Mm -hmm. um, he's a big guy. He looks like a bullfrog. And he'd wear it. He's exactly who you're thinking, right? A guy who's constantly <laughs> wiping his philtrum. Constantly wiping like mucus off the top <laughs> of his lip. Yeah. And, and he, uh, he tried to write a book. And it was so bad he had it pulled. And it's I was like, Oh shit, so you can read everything under the sun and you still will right. be can be a horrible writer. Well it's like Roger. And it's Ebert. a totally different thing. It's like the Valley of the Shadow of the Dolls, right? Like Did he make a movie? Yeah. I didn't know that. Dude, and it's trash. <laughs> Is it <laughs> it's really? fucking trash, dude. And that guy yeah. saw every single movie saw every and single. thought deeply about every movie. Yeah. Yeah. And it, like it that's the thing, is that like he, he didn't have the muscle to make movies. He had the muscle to review movies. Mm -hmm. And like just like that guy, he had the muscle to review novels and understand what made a good novel, but not the actual exercise to create mm -hmm. a good novel, you know? That's right. And that's like a lot of the, like a lot of people watch podcasts and like, dude, I could do this. And it's like, all right, then do it. And then like, don't be like, oh, I should be better. Like, you, you don't say that about yourself. Yeah. Other people say that about That's you, funny because you know? my dad, like, I used to, like, every any of, like, a rap song or, like, hip-hop came on. He's like, mm -hmm. he goes, they're just talking. I'm, I'm like, I'm from Texas. Yeah. Give him a break. He's like, they're just talking. You know, he's like, anybody can talk. I go, so you do rap God, dad. I'm going to put on... <laughs> I'm going to put on the rap God beat by Eminem right now. You do rap God. If anyone can do it, let's see you go. Yeah, give let's me a you quick spit. break your neck. Give me one of those real quick. You write the lyrics. You produce the beats. You, you know, come on. Do 808 and heart. You know It's you know easy, I mean? right? Yeah, do Kanye right now. Yeah. Dude, it's so fun. Like, the, the amount of, the attitude that some people have towards, like, you know, pop culture or art or mm -hmm. film or podcasts are like... Man, this is such trash. Like even mumble rap. Like I sure I was just like, oh, mumble rap is trash, but it's like mm -hmm. I don't know how the fuck to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like dubstep. It's like, dude, I hate this, but it's like, yeah, man. But there's like full raves in Pomona that disagree. You know? Yeah, yeah. No, those people are retarded though, <laughs> <laughs> and you should have no respect for them. By the way, you know what's funny about these conversations is this thing is like you're continually learning. Yeah. And that's like the beauty of it. So then, as you're learning, you you have this whole timeline of you creating stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And then at each point, you're going to have completely different opinions about the things you're right. talking about. You're, if, dude, so I do want to have a disclaimer yourself. there. <laughs> I don't, I'm not like trying to, I get self-conscious about this stuff because people go, oh, does Ben think he's like Ingmar Bergman or something? I'm like, <laughs> no, it's just like, here's what I've learned from making stuff and failing. And right. I've, I've made a lot of different things over the years and this is what I know. I don't think I'm great at what I uh, uh, at all this stuff. I'm just saying, like, you know, here's what I think is the path. I have gotten better, right? Way better since the first time I was 13 and I tried to write a script. I'm so much better. I've learned so much. So here's you know what I've learned since then. I'm 31 now. 13 and versus 31. <laughs> and uh, so I don't know. That's just what I've learned. I'm not. I'm not a pretentious cocksucker. I've seen like, <laughs> I've seen like, you've seen way, anybody listening has seen way more films than me. You have better film opinions than me. I know, call me an asshole because I have an Eraserhead poster. <laughs> so sue me, I like Eraserhead. It was also Kubrick's favorite movie, by the way. So go fuck yourself, cock, you film, film school <laughs> cocksucker. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the thing too, is that like the whole part of being a human is evolving and changing. And like, I wasn't the same That's person right. I was 10 years That's ago, right, yeah. five years ago, last year, last week. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm constantly evolving and mm -hmm. changing. And if you're not contradicting you're yourself throughout, yeah, <laughs> it's what we do, man. Like, 
I fit into whatever mold makes money. Though. I just like making stuff, and I like being being funny. Exactly. And, and the process of doing that is you're always learning. Right. And you so want to make fun. stuff that you would watch. Mm-hmm. That's essentially, as an artist, that's what you're trying to do. I want to make things that I would consume. Be the change mm-hmm. you want to be. Yep. And uh, uh, yeah, podcasters are artists, by the way. I don't know if you guys knew that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're like the Maca- the Picasso and the Michelangelo, dude. Yeah. We're doing a Sistine Chapel right now, That's dog. Right. <laughs> I hope people don't think this is a self serious thing, but this is what the podcast was about, right? You wanted to get into Emma just Your three legged dog the is fucking the f- <laughs> That's so Framing funny. is still good. We're good. Um, but this is this is what the people they just wanted like a behind this. This is for like most people. This would be boring, but this for people that are into is, this, like, people are interested in it, right? People, I don't think people have probably ever heard two podcast people like talking to each other about mm-hmm. the craft. I mean, sure, it probably exists out there. I've never seen it, mm-hmm. but like in this world, like in in this world of comedy podcasts and what we're doing, like I feel like this is a rarity, and so many people want to see behind the scenes, and like I've I've heard it and I've seen it, mm-hmm. where it's like, yeah, dude, like I'd be. If I wasn't where I was, I would love to know how to get to where I am. Yeah. You know, like to the point where it's like, yeah, dude, I've produced a lot of podcasts that people like and now going on my own. And people are like, dude, how do I do that? It's like, well, let's show you like, let's show you the journey that everyone else has taken because no, almost no journey is the same. Yeah. And the, but the everybody, most people, I think this is case for me, actually, mm-hmm. I'll just say for me, sure. do not, you can't wait. You no. got to go. I don't have the, I always say like, I don't have the money to do that. I don't have the budget to do that. D- try to do what you can. Right. I bought a computer for like a hundred bucks and I took it apart and put it back together and got it to work. And it took me like eight hours to export a podcast. <laughs> so that's what I was working with at the beginning. Right. But then I made a little bit of money and then I was able to afford $300 a month uh, payments on a MacBook Pro. This one right here. Mm-hmm. So like that you just, you keep learning and then you keep taking the little amount of money you get and you try to invest that back into your thing so you can learn more and more you can't nobody's gonna give you an opportunity no one's gonna that door you're knocking on it's never gonna open right it's never gonna open and you you just have to you have to just go out and get it yeah, you but can't you, twiddle your thumbs. But it's not going out and getting it. It's just like staying in and, just and receiving that it. That door you're knocking on, just sit down in the chair in the room. Do the you're work. You're not gonna get in that room. Do the work. And that room sucks. Those people are miserable. They all want to kill themselves. <laughs> right. Stay stay in your room and make things and figure things out and then then put them out there. That's yeah. that that would be my only the, thing. For anybody that wants to get into this bullshit. The the best time to start was yesterday. The second best time to start is today. Yeah. You know, and like And if you're not doing it, you probably don't. it's probably cuz you don't actually want to do it. Right. The, they, and they, that's fine too. They they think like it, it's you're almost if you're thinking about it that way, you're having the wrong expectations. Like, dude, I'm so great. I'm going to make a podcast and mm-hmm. I'm going to become a millionaire. It's like, yo, that is so the wrong way to look at it. Like, yeah. make the things that would entertain, make the thing that will satisfy and satiate your And that's your creativity. so few and far between. Yeah. I'm ha- I'm so happy that I can make, I can pay my bills doing what I do. Right. That's like, Which fuck. is rare. Like, we're, we're in the rare, like, 1% of the 1% of people that are in the industry. Because it's so hard to, A, make something that you would watch. And mm. B, do it with people that you don't absolutely hate. Yes. You know? Yeah, and then, and then like, I mean, in, like, the 19, like, 10s, like, a guy would play at the symphony or whatever. He's, like, the most beautiful, like, violinist anyone ever had seen. Right. And then the next day, you would have a plumber come over, and it's that same guy would, like, be going under the sink, like, fixing the leak. And you'd be like, didn't I just see you at, like, Carnegie Hall? But, like, that stuff used to not pay people any money. Right. So that's why... You know, when people bitch about this stuff, it's like, you shouldn't, like, artists uh, making any money at all is, like, new. Right. And, and anybody well, you've really Picasso respected died, died poor. like, poor, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This isn't like, uh, you know, it's like the most beautiful thing there is, is art, you know? But, right. uh, like, the idea that everybody should be making millions and millions of dollars is just the wrong reason to, to get into... Right. You, by the way, if you want... It's a lot easier just to make money just by getting into something else. Yeah. Get people, going to Wall Street. You yeah. Know? <laughs> well, I mean, this is... Yeah. Just... Well, why not get into a business where it's about money? Right. I don't get why so many people get into this the, these this business out here to try to make money. It's... It just it, it pollutes the fucking thing. You shouldn't be thinking about money at all when you're, it comes to this stuff. You're so right because, I, I, and I think we're similar here, where our biggest motivators in creating something isn't for the money. It's that, ooh, I might be able to like change someone's day. 
you know? Like oh, the, I don't the, think about that. Oh, okay. Well, I'll I, just speak about myself. If I like, don't do this, I feel like I'm going to kill myself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, I, like, I write and I work on stuff because if I don't, then my mind goes to a bad place. Oh, okay. And I feel like if I'm not creating stuff, I can't. I, I guess we are a little different. I feel like I have to express my... I saw this uh, interview from Dennis Hopper where he was saying, he goes, people tell me they want to get in the arts, and I tell them, like, whatever they're trying to do, if it was taken away from them, would they be able to uh, live their life? Do something else. Uh, and do something else. And, like, like, would it literally kill them if you took it away from them? And he said, if the answer is no, then you shouldn't be pursuing that thing. Right. Like, I couldn't um, imagine myself doing but, anything other than this. Well, but all the comments are like, fuck this guy. <laughs> like, he's an asshole. How dare he say that? I have hobbies, and, you know, I'm a musician, too. And this, like, it really upset people. And it's like, yeah, if you don't feel that passionately about the thing you're doing, right? then I don't know if it really... I could be wrong, but it seems that everybody I really respect and I admire, they abandon everything within their own life right. to pursue whatever it is that they're working on and it, they pour every dime they had yeah they put it before family before yeah. love before fucking everything yeah and I, I don't know i feel i feel weird about that too because i've never tried to abandon my loved ones for mm -hmm. something like that i've always tried to be like isn't there some way i can like oh, dude, give and I, take here and like i, I feel like i want to have this shit before my health so much before my family's like hey are you coming over for passover it's on wednesday i'm like i'll be there saturday if you want <laughs> You know, like I'm driving on the Sabbath, bitch. Yeah, it's just like no, you. We're gonna change around this lunar calendar for my work schedule. <laughs> That's so. I mean, I never thought about working. I'm. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd abandon Judaism. I'm sure. I did. Yeah, <laughs> I did, man. I've co I've come back. I've come back uh, to my roots. Yeah, I'm a, a white a Christian racist. Good old C boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a good old racist Christian boy. Who just loves love me some Friday Night Lights football. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I, I know that we're starting to run a little late and stuff, but I wanted to, you know, we're getting into, you know, we, we didn't touch on a lot of things, but, you know, the jump from, like, leaving stuff behind and then starting your own mm -hmm. thing. Like, what, like, I want to I wanna know about that process. Mm, yeah, I mean, that's, that's tough, especially when everyone's tweeting at you. Right. That you're gay and yeah. that you suck. That's... One of the reasons I like kind of like living inside my own head mm -hmm. is because like the people aren't in there mm -hmm. and like the people out there are really mean. Yeah. And they people out there will try to tell you who you are. All but private accounts, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but these people are like it, it's tough because they're they're on the Internet. They have this idea of who you are. Right. They've never met you even in person. Yeah. But they, the world will try to tell you who you are. Right. And then they try to make you fit in that box. But if you retreat and you go inside your own head and you create what and make what you and do what you want to do and live the kind of life you want to do, then beautiful, really beautiful things can happen. Yeah. And sometimes those voices get in and then you, you fight them. But uh, it's you, you, you got to ignore like all that stuff, especially when I think um, uh, Kanye said in a, uh, you remember when Yeezus came out, everyone hated it. Yeah. And now it's like a revolution. It's like this beautiful album that everybody, right. uh, it's like an acclaimed thing. He has that opening line where he says, as soon as they like you, make that, make them unlike you. Huh. Where he's, he's like, cause he was, he had this whole image of who he was and then he completely changed the Kanye You're sound. Like, Surprise, and started doing new. not a big fan of Yeezus. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, does that upset you? No, watch. He'll convert to Judaism Here's next year. Easy, dude. <laughs> you guys like shoes? <laughs> you guys like Hitler? <laughs> you guys like Hitler? You guys like socks with rubber soles? <laughs> Here it comes, baby. It's 20 bucks now. You have to... Um, I think Hemingway said something like, writing is easy, you just need to have the guts of a burglar. Uh -huh. Something like that. And then he listed a bunch of other things, but... You gotta, you just have to have guts with this stuff, and you gotta make the jump without cables. Uh, you just gotta jump. Totally. You just have to. You just you have, have to commit. Yeah, and uh, I saw uh, Patrice once said he said, "Have your opinions, but don't let your opinions have you." Mm. That's that's really smart too. Where you can't get too emotional about the things that you believe about the world and about yourself and everything, 
have your opinions, but then don't. And by the way, it's funny I'm saying this because I have a podcast where I get like irately upset about <laughs> stuff and I start <laughs> screaming. <laughs> I bet every comment is calling me a cocksucker, like They're an like, abusive this shit. This is the most hypocritical podcast I've ever fucking heard. <clears throat> but people don't know what, what uh, happens in your life. They right. don't know what happens behind closed doors. They don't know why you're making the decisions you make. Like I said, people don't see the compromises that you're not making and you're making they don't right. see any of that stuff so you just have to yeah all you they gotta see is the, the thing you're allowing them to see but mm. they just see the tip of the iceberg they don't see the 95 percent that's submerged underneath they the don't water. they don't even understand right. they don't even understand their own lives right a lot of them don't i click on their profiles when they're, they're tweeting at me and i go man this guy is such a miserable dude it's a horrible life shit, dude and he's just, <laughs> he has no control over his own miserable life. And then he's trying to bring you into it. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, I think people who are hurt really bad that oh, yeah. like live in hell, they want to drag you to hell too. And I don't think it's a malevolent thing. I think hurt people hurt people. Well, That's what they, you know. I get, I, yeah, it's that because I think people, I think when people are in a lot of pain, I think they want to and they live in hell, they want to pull you down into hell with them so they can express to you how they feel. Mm -hmm. And that's the only way they could really express to you how bad they feel oh, is yeah. to make you feel shitty because they themselves feel so, it's so... It's all projection. Yeah, they're they're filled with terror and like they have no control over their own life and they're scared and they want to make you feel that yeah. way too to, to communicate that. Steven Spielberg never comments on my shit being like, you fucking dumb Jay. What, that, what the fuck are you doing? He's... <laughs> He's that guy's too busy running a sex trafficking ring. <laughs> Look into it. Look into it. Yeah. Oh, that's why he's done all those fucking kid movies. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, here's a here's a really funny and sad thing. I've uh -huh. heard that like every big celebrity, like they have like fake accounts and stuff, and they listen to podcasts, and they're like on Reddit and shit. Like they're all like. It's always funny when you find out like Kevin Durant has like an alt Twitter account oh, yeah. and he's arguing like, no, dude, KD is still the GOAT and like shit. <laughs> and you're like, man, even with all your money and all your success, you're creating alt accounts and then like defending your name on like Reddits. And it's like, oh man, does it never. I So one time I was at a Futurama party when uh -huh. I was at Funny or Die. My friend was uh, cousins with the guy who like produced Futurama. He's like, hey, come to this thing. We'll bring the Oculus Rift. Uh, which was a, a 360 uh, VR thing at mm -hmm. the time, like 2014. He's like, we'll get Matt Groening to do it. I was like, fuck yeah, I want to meet Matt Groening. So it was like a cool-ass party, right? And then after I'm hanging out with this guy, he was an actor on the show, he'll go unnamed. And uh, he was like, I was like drinking with him. And I was like, fuck, I can't even believe I'm here. Like I just met Matt Groening. This is fucking insane, you know? And this guy looked at me as he was drinking. And he goes, yeah, these guys in... Um, in middle school, I, I was I had this crush on this girl, and these guys came up to me and they um in front of in front of her they called me a fat. <laughs> oh, I guess you got to bleep that. Oh, there's a lot of bleeping I'll be doing <laughs> this episode. <laughs> they called me they called me a. <laughs> okay, by that. Yeah, I'll bleep that too. <laughs> <laughs> they they called him gay essentially. There we go. That's in front of this girl <laughs> mm -hmm. that he was really trying to impress, and she laughed at him. And she started going out with one of those guys, and he never got to ask her out. And now he's a millionaire. He's very successful. And he looked at me, and he goes, he goes, after all the success I have, he goes, I wish they could see me now. And I go, oh, man. Like, pro I looked at net worth, like, $80 million. I go, man, it doesn't matter how much. Like, that guy is still. So slight. he's living in <laughs> He's living in sixth grade still. Right. All this stuff you start to learn is still high school. People. It's yeah. like middle school, high school, forever, 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 forever for a lot of people. But you can you can get out of that. You really can. I got out of a lot of that stuff with just doing um, transcendental meditation. That's really mm -hmm. and a lot of people are rolling their eyes right now, but it's really helped me. Yeah, it helped me quit smoking. It helped me grow a backbone. It helped me stand up for myself. And it helped me get rid of a lot of distractions in my head, so then I can start focusing on the things I actually enjoy doing that make me happy. Hell yeah. So you got to you got to find a thing to it, it it takes a while to get a backbone. I think um you know David Lynch has said this but like you know don't take no for an answer. Mm -hmm. And I think in, Dave, mo in most cases in yeah, most situations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unless you're a lady. Uh, <laughs> 
Uh, but uh, I, I think or they, a child. Yeah. Do you know the story about? Uh, I'm sure film people know this, but the story about David Fincher. Tell me. He was. Uh, he went to a film school, and he was like, "Okay, who here has an idea for a film?" This is what he said first, se- like second he walked in the class. <laughs> Every student's like, "Fuck, it's David Fincher." Right, and he's like, "Who has a film idea?" Someone raises their hand. He goes, "What's your film idea?" They stand up. They go, "All right, so it's about a guy and blah blah blah." He starts telling it. He goes, "Trying to start a fight club." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, he goes, uh, "He goes, he goes, shut the fuck up, sit down." He goes, "No, no, no, <laughs> shut up, sit down." He goes, "Who else here has a film idea?" <laughs> Finally, someone raises their hand. It's like this girl. She hands up. She's like, "So I think there should be a movie about." It. And he's like, "Listen," he goes, "No, no, 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 shut the fuck up, sit down, sit down, sit, sit the fuck down." He goes, anybody else? Someone stands up, starts telling their idea. He goes, set the fuck, shut up, shut up, shut the fuck up, sit down, sit down. He like sit down. He goes, so none of you are ever going to be able to make a movie. He goes, and you know why? Because I told you to shut, I told you to shut the fuck up and sit down and you did. And anytime I've had to make a movie in my whole career, I've, everybody has told me, everybody has told me to shut the fuck up and sit down and I didn't. And that's because every Every step I've been at, and this is this is the case for any business or anything, people will tell you, you're doing that? Right. You're doing that? That's so true. You're starting Lemon Pot? You're doing that? You're trying to write a book? You're trying to, well, what are you doing that for? What are you, everybody, you just, I see comments, right. tons of people. No, shut the fuck up, sit down, shut the fuck up, sit down. No. Yeah. And then you make something successful and then a lot of, almost all those people disappear. And some of those people actually become listener, became listeners of the show, and then they'll write me, hey, I'm sorry, I said a lot of mean things to you on the internet, I thought you sucked ass oh, and dude, were gay. Those conversion and then emails con- are the funniest. I listened to your show because I thought it would suck ass, but I actually love it a lot, and stuff like that, so... Yeah, the, you can't comments, let people... You really surprised me. People <laughs> moving to L.A., why would you want to move to L.A.? Uh, working in film, why would you want, like, it's just why, but what, don't you want to use your degree? Why do you want to do that? It's it's all shut the fuck up, sit down, shut the right. fuck up, sit down, shut the fuck up. So you just gotta, you gotta, I mean, I don't know, man. You gotta be fucking stubborn, honestly. You gotta kinda, and you gotta have faith. It's this combination of self-hate that drives you to the thing, and then this weird, like, ego and, and, and like, faith. Yeah. To just make the jump anyway. And even if you're not religious, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and you can believe in a Jewish God. Isn't that Christian I mean, God? People forget in the Matrix that Neo was trying to make those jumps across the roof, and he didn't do it. Like he right. f- he fell quite a bit, and like, like in a rubber cement type of thing. But like still, yeah, it hurt. Morpheus <laughs> told him he was the fucking the one, and uh, Neo didn't immediately believe it. You know, and he he couldn't even prove it. Yeah, until uh, you know he kept trying and stuff. I'm sorry, that was a gay metaphor, but. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I do. by the I way, do. Matrix I One. I love the Matrix so much. I Matrix think about one, it all yeah, the time. So good. Oh, I was like, talking about like Matrix Two. Oh shit! Okay. I've never seen the first one. Is it good? <laughs> he jumped and fell in I'm the first. Kidding, one. <laughs> oh wait, are you talking about the Dreadlock Twins? That, I just that love was the, your favorite. I just shit? love the Dreadlock Twins. <laughs> The fucking albinies? Yeah. I just, I'm no, I'm, I've only seen The Matrix 2, which I call The Matrix. I don't even regard The Matrix 1 as canon. Yeah, cause yeah. Because The Matrix 2 is so Yo, good. Huge Jada fan. <laughs> huge. Is this uh, kind of the what you wanted to talk to me about? Yeah, like, dude. Like, this is, honestly, this is so much better than I thought it was going to be. I mean, did you want to talk about WAV files and MP3 files? I mean, what did you want to talk yeah, about? Yeah, dude. How do you up res from, from 720 to 1080? <laughs> do you shoot in 2398 or 2997? And then also, what kilohertz are you recording audio in? No, 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 dude. Like, this is exactly what I wanted, which is just like, what, you know, what does it take? Like, what was your journey from like where you started? To the thing that you wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Because like I said, like there's so many different journeys that you can take. And so many people are like, oh, dude, what the way that they did it, like they, they really lucked out. And it's like, sure, luck has some stuff to do with it. But being prepared for that luck is so much more important than the luck. Because everyone gets presented with opportunities. Mm-hmm. But so many people are not ready for that opportunity when it's presented to them. Yeah. And so it's all about just practicing and being ready for that shit. Yeah, and being just be fun. to Like enjoy life and be, be fun to be around. Hang. That's like not, Stop that's sucking 80% ass. of it. Dude, even if you're you're more qualified 10 times like than the other guy, like if the other guy's like fun to be around, you suck ass, no one's going to work with you. Dude, there are so many cons. Just the way it is. <laughs> There's so many cons that they were like, "Hey man, let me work with you." It's like, "Dude, I know you're good at what you do." 
But God, I cannot even think about being in a room with you for eight hours, let alone three hours. Yeah, you can't look me in the eye. You can't like you don't understand like yeah. jokes. We you like don't... the different things, like, yeah. and you miss a hundred percent of the time. Like, <laughs> like I know you know I'm a cheap laugh, but like you haven't been able to make me laugh. And like I laugh at fucking why the chicken crossed the road. Like I mm-hmm. I laugh at anything. Oh, and I you're know. Miss- no, getting a laugh around you means nothing to me. Right? It shouldn't. <laughs> it shouldn't. But getting no laughs should mean a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. You help everyone kill, but then if they bomb around you, it's yeah. like, fuck. It's just like, dude, I'm really fucking up, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude, I made every show I've ever produced make it seem like a fucking laugh riot. Right. And to me, it is. But, you know, for, for a lot of they're like, oh, this is fucking well, forced. Like, oh, dude, I'm a cheap date. No, <laughs> sometimes people go like, oh, that's forced laughter. It's like, but there's stakes when you're live on air. And there's tension within right. you as you're filming everything. And yeah. so... It, it, it heightens the experience as opposed to if you were just watching it at home, it's more casual. Right. But when you're really in the room, it's totally different. Yeah. It's why stand-up specials sometimes might not seem funny on TV, but then you go and see it in person, you're like, holy fuck, that was the best show I ever saw. Right. And it just doesn't translate, really. Exactly. It's kind of the same thing with podcasts, you know? Yeah, people don't understand what it's like to be in that room. People don't understand... Like, everyone understands what, what it's like to be on the other side of the screen. Mm-hmm. No one understands what it's like to be inside the control room mm-hmm. or, uh, you know, in front of the microphone mm-hmm. or the one that's Googling mm-hmm. or the one that's doing whatever. Like, yo, bro, it's... Yeah, this shit is objectively easy when you're being unobserved, but then there's the observer effect, right? Yeah, exactly. As soon as you, uh, uh, people are watching you how you're doing something, the way you do it completely yeah, changes. Then I Google like this. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Fuck. You know, your hands just die and have rigor mortis, and you're like, oh, God, I can't fucking, why am I saying this in the dumbest way? Instead of being like, uh, when uh, uh, you know Michael Jordan's flu game, mm. I just write out a full question like Ask Jeeves style. Like, yeah. Uh, dear Jeeves. Yeah. When did Michael Jordan become too sick, but then played anyways mm-hmm. in the nineties? And it's just like, yo, that's so many words, dude. Like, are mm. you dumb on purpose? Like, no, completely on accident. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I, but we, we both are pretty retarded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like in so many different ways than people understand. <laughs> Like it's like yeah, the way that you see, I'm definitely retarded like that. But like, I'm so much dumber than you think. <laughs> I'm just a retarded guy who like reads books. Yeah, dude, I should start reading. You like you're saying Faulkner and like <laughs> such big words. I'm like, yeah, dude, shit. I should fucking I it, should. You know, Audible is cheating, right? Like that doesn't count. It that doesn't, doesn't stick with you. No, but it does help writing if you sometimes I'll I'll read a book and then listen to the audiobook after. Mm. So and you I double like, read. You read twice. Sometimes, yeah. Or cool. I'll like. Uh, I like to reread books every year, certain books I really like, and then sometimes I'll listen to an, I like listening to an audiobook while reading a different book as well. Okay. So like in the morning while I'm making a coffee, I'll put on an audiobook for like 15 minutes and then I'll like meditate and stuff hmm. like that. So cuz then you can um start hearing the rhythm of 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 things and, and shit like that. Oh yeah. It also helps especially if you're reading a book with a lot of hard words. You go fuck, I've been pronouncing that wrong forever <laughs> you go fuck i'm retarded you go you say saga instead of sega i'm like the, i thought it was like sega genesis <laughs> the p is silent in pneumonia are you fucking serious dude <laughs> well fuck ben but, i love being a retard <laughs> dude it's the most dude here's here's what people don't understand it's very easy to be stupid oh, hard yeah. to be stupid on purpose because oh, yeah. for you to be able to weave and understand the level of stupidity you're doing, like you got to be pretty smart to be. Dumb well, that's the it. cognitive dissonance <laughs> thing I'm talking about, where you just have to be like, no, I'm kind of a retard. Yeah, and I have it. a lot of blind spots. Own it and defects, like everybody. Yeah, and if you just go, yeah, I'm just kind of a retard. Surprise, we're human, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I make mistakes. I make them all the time. Yeah, we're dumbasses. Yeah, <laughs> I'm very dumb. I should have been dead five times by now. Dude, I have to read like a book like every week just to not become completely fucking useless. <laughs> Just to not stare into space, I have to read a really difficult book. Just to keep my like head above water, kind of. And then I'll read a comment from someone. I'll be like, fuck, that guy is like 10 times as smart as me. Shit. Yeah. Holy he's shit. way smarter than that me. That guy knows me so much better than I know me. <laughs> he's, he's confirming all the doubts I've ever had about myself. <laughs> or her. You know, they could be me. And too. I'm like, whatever. They're actually they're fucking way more retarded than I am, actually. Because they're commenting. No, yeah. Fuck, oh, yeah. Well, they're fucking 150 followers, private account, and they're just fucking, they sharpen knives and fucking minutes. I'm not going to think about this for months. <laughs> it's not going to For some weird reason, this comment just got to me really bad. Sometimes you go on an older post and just review that comment, and you're like, like, mm, 
Yeah. Yeah, it didn't really, get any upvotes. That really saturates. <laughs> yeah, it, it rules to uh, stew like a lunatic. Oh, yeah. In your room, be like, why did they comment that? I'm Sometimes I set, a, set time aside and I'll be like, you know what? I'm going to be really toxic for the next 30 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> I'm going to read all the things that hate me <laughs> and see if I agree with them. <laughs> and surprise, for the most part, I do. <laughs> Isn't it funny that you find out like everybody, every comic like spends like hours on their own Reddit like every week? Yeah. And you're like, fuck, that's hilarious. That's so fucking and funny. And they all, because they all, because it's a tabloid for themselves. Right. So And they're narcissists. So they just, that's all they do yeah and then they love going on their show and saying that they don't read it they make a point like they go i don't read comments and i don't i don't even know what reddit is actually do you know how long i have to google it's like just admit you read it bad shit about me <laughs> <laughs> i wish it was all just centralized in one place uh-huh. <laughs> but you know hopefully in like five years i'll be big enough to have my own reddit where people could just fucking want to tear my innards apart you know yeah like wolves if we're lucky I would love to see you get attacked by wolves. I would love to lower you on a crane like in the Jurassic Park scene when they lower the cow. How, into do, we, the... how do we get in this room? <laughs> <laughs> that was like such a quick jump. <laughs> yeah, you know, like I just want someone to fucking clever girl you do. <laughs> Oh, uh, this this was fun. This was fun. I really, I really, uh, um, I have fun with you, buddy. Yeah, dude, same, man. I'm so glad that you were able to like invite me into your home. It was, of course. Uh, I, I really liked my tactic in asking you to do this too. I'm like, hey, dude, you know I'll be in LA for a week. I'd love to record with you. You're like, dude, I'd love to. I'm like, great. I'm gonna come over to your house and use all your equipment <laughs> and like also your time and kick your wife and your kid out of the it's house. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Hey, I would have kicked them out myself. I'm like, this baby's crying a little too much, and I got work to do. Get him. <laughs> Out of here! <laughs> well, Ben, thank it's, you so much. We're, for we're doing used this, to Jews man. evicting us from our home, so <laughs> dude, I can't wait to be that Jew. <laughs> thank you, buddy. In. Thank you. Uh, uh, more plugs. Patreon.com slash lemon party. Uh, that's for bonus episodes, audio and video of Lemon Party. Subscribe to Lemon Party. I also do live streams every week on the Lemon Party Clips channel, so sub to that. Uh, Twitter at Ben Avery's Good uh, and Instagram as well. And uh, lemonparty.live for all live dates. If you if you want to, I'll hang out after. I'll, I'll chill. It's 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 a good time. I'm I'm. This is the five thousandth time I've checked to make sure everything's recording, and it is. Fuck yeah. That dude. never stops, by the way. That's great. If if you are recording, puck, you are constantly checking to make sure everything is recording because oh, you yeah. worried that you fucked everything up. Oh yeah. All, every second like, of oh, the recording. Did we just lose a hour and a half of complete gold? Dude, I've heard horror stories. Dude, I've heard horror stories. Yeah. Where I'm like, fuck, I had to like kill myself. Dude, I... there's so many things that, like, yeah, the horror stories have to happen <sighs> to you because that's how you learn. <clears throat> <sighs> They've never happened to me like that. <sighs> Not like that. Must be nice. <laughs> <laughs> always have backups. Or well, you know what? I've always been in the immediate vicinity where it's just like, oh, I just watched that guy clear a card. <laughs> <laughs> You just clear, I mean, don't get me wrong. I've deleted episodes on accident. Oh, like you that. really have? <laughs> oh, fuck. I sorry, kill myself. Taylor Tomlinson. I'm so sorry for deleting your <laughs> YMH episode. But, you know, you'll get over it. I'm sure you'll find. Like, we She's got the numbers. Fine. We got, you know, I deleted it like two weeks after it was up. We got the numbers, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, Ben, thank you so much for doing this. And, um, yeah, man, I can't wait to do more of these with you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll do oh, yeah. It. Well, Would you like to do more of these, Ben? Yeah, sure. Good. I'll see you in Austin. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. Thank right. you. Boy, that was a fun interview with Ben Avery, wasn't it? Go ahead and comment down below to tell me who you want me to interview next. And before we wrap up this episode, I'd like to say thank you to all the producers that you're seeing on screen right now. They're all supporting me via Patreon. And if you want to do that as well, you can go ahead and click the link in the description below. I'd like to say thank you for checking out this episode of Catching You Up With... Anadao, it's go, it's... But most importantly, I'd like to remind you that everything that you heard in this interview is... This is a totally <laughs> unconfirmed news. All right, messed that up a little bit, but I think you'd forgive me. See you next week.